As many of you know, Donald Trump became the first president to cross into the DMZ and meet with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. Now, I'm of the belief that he's in way over his head, and he's probably too stupid to conduct diplomacy effectively in a way that would yield some sort of deal similar to the Iran nuclear deal. However, that doesn't mean that I don't give him credit for trying, because I think that he does deserve credit here for initiating dialogue with North Korea. And I'm saying that especially knowing the way that Donald Trump operates. He's either hot or he's cold. So if he's not, you know, talking to Kim Jong-un, then the alternative would likely be that he is threatening to wipe them out on Twitter. So um, if you're going to ask me which version of Donald Trump I'd prefer, uh, I'm going to go for the Trump version that isn't threatening to uh, nuke them on Twitter and is trying to talk to them. And look, let's all admit to ourselves as lefties, we need to be confident enough to acknowledge that in the event Obama or Bernie Sanders did this, we would be applauding him. So I'm not going to be a hack. I'm not going to say, oh, well, because it's Donald Trump and I don't like Trump, you know, this is bad. I'm not going to shit on it. Again, we can be objective and understand that he doesn't necessarily know what to do to construct a deal that's effective, you know, or in any type of peace agreement. I don't think anything will be codified. And if it is, then great. I'll applaud him for that. But just the effort in and of itself, I think, is commendable because you know, this is someone who's a belligerent man-child, so if he's trying to do peace, I'm okay with that, and I hope everyone else will get on the same page and be okay with that as well, because we're not hacks. We have objective standards as members of the left for what is good politically and bad politically, and diplomacy and peace is always going to be my preference. So let's not be hacks, but Fox News, um, they admitted that they're hacks. <laughs> I don't know why they said this, but in a recent episode of The Five, they literally admitted that if there wasn't a Republican Party president that was doing this, and if it was someone else, they would be denouncing it. But because Donald Trump did it, they were celebrating it. I can't believe they admitted this, but take a look. Greg, um, but sometimes you need a symbolic moment so ev for everybody to take notice. The other thing that tr President Trump was able to do mm -hmm. is he got everyone to stop talking about the Democratic debate. Mm, interesting. <laughs> right? Which maybe helps the Democrats. Yeah, you know, um, <laughs> I don't, I, of course they're going to attack him. That's what you would do. And I, and let's be honest, if it were the adversary, uh, an adversarial from your party on the other side doing it during you, we would do the same How thing. How dare Obama <laughs> meet with a dictator with no preconditions. Exactly. Yeah, so, in 07. So, um, <laughs> but if, uh, so I want to just attack, attack a couple of the criticisms. If you see diplomacy as a weakness, what does that leave you with? Uh, we know that there are tyrants and creeps in this world. You can hold two thoughts in your head, that there are rough customers in the world, and you got to talk to them. So you can do, you can keep those, and 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 you can then, and then your goal is to remove the psychological barriers or the threats that are perceived by the adversary who thinks that maybe you want to kill them. Trump has removed that. He's saying, look, we're not we're not interested in blowing you up. You don't need to have these uh, these nuclear items. Um, but I mean, casting diplomacy as a zero sum game. We talk to him, therefore we lose something. Right? So what did we lose? Did we lose money? Did we lose land? Did we lose lives? No. Well, we lost our status in the world uh, while we've elevated his status. That, if that's how you value these things, no wonder we've made no progress. <laughs> what a fascinating admission. Like, I, I can't believe they'd actually say that. It's not shocking. I don't think anyone will be surprised by this, but what they're essentially admitting is that we are the propaganda arm of the Republican Party. And if our team does something, it's good by definition because we're on the same team. And we're going to support our team no matter what and hate the opposing team no matter what. I mean, that's the definition of being a political hack. And again, I, I cannot believe they admitted this. So Gutfeld said, let's be honest here. If it were an adversary from your party doing it, uh, we would do the same. And then Waters said, how dare Obama meet with a dictator with no preconditions? Uh, Gutfeld then said, exactly. And then Gutfeld was correct in saying, you know, diplomacy isn't a zero-sum game where talking to someone doesn't necessarily mean we lose something. That's a solid point. And I can't believe that I'm saying this, but I agree with Greg Gutfeld on something. However, isn't it a little bit shocking that he would move away from that position in the event a President Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren or Tulsi Gabbard was doing this? Isn't that a little bit shocking? I mean, why do people feel the need to be so tribalistic and adhere to team politics 
when the goal of politics is the formulation of policy. I don't care about politics for the drama. I care about politics for the policy because crafting good public policy is the main goal of government. It's governance. That's the whole point. But they're admitting here, actually, I just want to root for my team because that's what I'm paid to do. How embarrassing. <laughs> How fucking embarrassing. Wow. Wow. Now, look, I'm not just going to shit on the, you know, Fox News here because many Democrats have been insufferably hacky here as well. So there were actually a number of Democrats that slammed Donald Trump for meeting with Kim Jong-un. Uh, they called it a photo op, which it is, but that doesn't really matter. Biden accused him of coddling dictators. Kamala Harris claimed that North Korea was a threat that should be taken seriously. Totally disagree. And even Bernie Sanders, who is, you know, usually better on these issues and has previously given Donald Trump credit for initiating dialogue with North Korea, he claimed that this was a photo op. Now, again, let me remind you that we have a man-baby president, and if he is not initiating dialogue, then he's going to be threatening to nuke them on Twitter. Because either way, he has to come away seeming as, you know, someone who was victorious in a situation, and either the stronger one or someone who was able to negotiate some sort of deal, whatever the details may be. So let's use our knowledge of Donald Trump and how petulant he is to our advantage and commend him here because... If he's not going to be talking to Kim Jong-un, he'll likely be threatening to bomb him. And I get that this may seem like a false dichotomy, and maybe that's true, maybe that's correct. But this is the way that Donald Trump has previously behaved. He's hot or he's cold. He's either threatening them or he's talking to them. This is what Donald Trump does. This is the way he operates. So, look, I just want people to stop being hacks, and I want them to be consistent and say this policy is good regardless if... My team does it or the other team does it. That's really what politics is about, right? Everybody has got to agree on an objective standard of what good governance and good policy is, and we just can't get people to agree to that. But we need consistency here, not team politics, and we need to stop conceptualizing these other countries who are smaller, who will not attack us as threats. Because we're the threat to them, and the only way they're going to be a threat to us or one of our allies is if they think that an attack on them is imminent. That's it. So, I think that overall, you know, what we just need to do is encourage good policy, and Trump is like a child, so he needs positive reinforcement. So, it makes me worried whenever politicians will shit on him for doing something that we'd all be applauding Obama on the left, you know, if he did. But, you know, unfortunately, it goes both ways. Republicans are just as hacky because they admitted here on Fox News, you know, we wouldn't be applauding Obama if he were the one to do this. I mean, it's just embarrassing, people. Come on, let's stop being hacks. Let's stop being overly tribalistic. And let's just, let's encourage people to do the right thing regardless of the team that they're on and you're on. How about that? Mike is a total loser. So don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.